Yeah, I'm super happy to see. Good afternoon, everybody. David here, target individual, unfortunately, and I'm with Lewis. He's a target individual and a, a neural rights advocate, advocate, and he don't like being called target individual, so my bad, Lewis. Uh, I hope you understand. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, we were just talking, you know, Lewis is uh, the one who um, uh, August 29th is most target individuals know as target individual day. Well, Lewis came up with that, and I was going to let him start out and sort of break the ice today about telling how that came about. Yeah, hey, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, David. Yeah, uh, TI Day was uh, a big momentum that took place from an initiative that where uh, I had began <laughs> um, campaigning and networking and talking to people all over the country, uh, especially uh, people around the world. Um, I had spoken to so many different TIs and people that are targeted. And, uh, you know, that was a lot of work and I was getting hit through all of it and going through manipulations and things and trying to get this thing out because, you know, public exposure is what we needed. And we did. And then we got the global gathering together. We had um, connected with individuals from people who didn't even know that there was a TI community and they found out that there were TIs all over the world. So that was that was information that was you know definitely accumulated back in those days. And, you know, it, it made a community better connected with everybody. So. Uh, it effectively changed the the patterns in, in in our world. It changed the world that day when we all gathered together, you know, and, and participated for you know uh, targeting exposure, which is uh, more exposure today from the AHI and homeless health and ins incidents with the homeless security and the government um, that are talking about you know people being targeted and whatnot. Um, you know, there are some similarities to what they're talking about. What happens to a you know a TI? There are similarities, uh, especially with the microwaves and whatnot, um, you know, but uh, uh, still in the same sense, it's 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 not really still still in the same sense. The TIs are still being recognized, uh, especially especially how it's happening and occurring. But it's good that they're recognizing that, you know, the microwave weapons are, are occurring, but they're not giving us the full details on the information that is happening. So. Um, you know, it's basically trying to model something, a concept of what's going on, which we know that it's most of this stuff is remote. So, but what they're saying is that these are handheld uh, backpack devices that you can squeeze in somewhere and be able to carry with you. And then you can shoot it like a gun <clears throat> at someone's uh, home or, you know, anywhere like that. <laughs> so just to filibuster for a minute, you know, I like to try to talk about that. And um, I have a slide that I built based off the homeland security video that was that's that i made and just to go over it and talk about it and maybe some things that we can do uh extensively to reach out because uh you know it was mentioned that there are other AI, ahi victims uh that are affected by microwave weapons and i just want to you know i'm happy about this this is crazy because uh you know I, i've been working for about eight years on this whole thing and uh now now to see that this information is populated uh throughout the community and that there are people actually investigating these things and and uh the the department of defense might be the next next one to be investigating including uh legislations like the advanced syndrome act that they're talking about amending hopefully out to the public um because people do do need help they do need treatment <clears throat> and um to start with um but yeah ti day was a, was a good day uh chicago was the biggest event you know, and that was back in August 29th, 2018. And what gave me that idea for August 29th was the I Have a Dream speech from Martin Luther King. Um, it was on August 28th. So it made better sense to put it on August 29th, the day after, because it was more effective, I believe, rather than taking someone else's day. We just create a day of our own and then put it on that day effectively. So, you know, and a, a lot of good, a lot of good effort was put into it. Banners, you know, uh, flyers, uh, people participating globally in front of UN buildings like Korea, um, Japan, uh, the UK, a lot of different places. And, you know, of course, I was in Michigan at the time when I started doing activism there. And now I'm in Arizona where I've done uh, tremendous amounts of types of activism. <clears throat> you know, I've created a couple of different groups. I've uh, created Targeted and Traffic, which is an anti-neural human trafficking organization uh, that was uh, related to neural data being stolen remotely before there was a neural law. So uh, before the neural laws came out, you know, that was I was already trying to take an, take an effect of that. And then the cyber torture 
report came out and that was that was a big plus because the cyber torture report talks about remote neural technologies and let me uh when i so i'll go go to my screen share right quick and i'll show you right quick what i'm talking so about you don't think you said the department of defense would be investigating but i i'm pretty convinced the dod's part of it so would yeah, they be investigating they, um, themselves yeah well that's that's what someone said a long time ago they said well will the fbi be investigating themselves if it's the fbi yeah, internal affairs will have to get involved, you know, say, for example, for the FBI, but the Department of Defense and the branches of government will have to take a look at what the DOD has been doing if they're a part of it. Right. So, yeah, so there's that. And um, hold on a sec. Let me go to uh, my advocacy page right quick and I'll show you about the cyber torture report. So this right here, can you see it? Yeah, also. Okay, yeah. So this part, this part right here uh, mentions that... <laughs> Um. Uh, let's see. Okay, so right here, where it says on seventy-one, paragraph seventy-one, and increasingly also through the remote control or manipulation of stun belts. So stun belts are basically like a like a piece of technology that they someone will put on you to remotely torture you, like electrocute you. So to carry on from that, it mentions that uh, medical implants, uh, remote medical implants. And conceivably remote uh, nanotechnological or neurotechnological devices. So they're 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 stating that remote neurotechnological devices can torture you, along with cyber technology, which is great because we had that on paper, which came out back in 2021, which was from Niels Melzer. But unfortunately, uh, you know, he had left the United Nations as being the special rapporteur on torture, and you know, with that is like you know he went to Red Cross, but I don't think anybody can even reach him anymore. Yeah, so, his videos and on that, YouTube and everything just went disappeared. Yeah, he just sort of disappeared. You know, he still has his videos on YouTube and whatnot discussing about cyber torture and, and all these other things. And oh. the committee said he, yeah, yeah. I couldn't find him when I looked for him. I looked for I him think a couple the, weeks ago. Oh, really? Well, I think the last time I checked, they were still there. But oh, okay. cyber torture is still, uh, you know, a mandate that's inside the United Nations that 99% of the world denied because he wanted to ban neural technologies that were that were remote that could torture people so that's what he was trying to do and everybody denied it well then you know the neural rights foundation came up with a solution of providing legislation in south america which was uh, in chile uh they passed that legislation then colorado finally passed passed that legislation about two or three years later and um you know ever since then it's been, it's been good you know colorado got their neural rights uh, uh, legislation, which California is next, and I think Minnesota is still trying to get theirs. But I the think big the question is, is Lewis. The big yeah. question is on the neural rights is how do you, you can't prove it. So even if you have rights, you can't prove it. You know what I'm saying? So they need to come up with ways to, um, kind of like uh, what would you say? So kind of like if so and so breaks in my house, I can prove it because he broke the door and broke in. They need to come up with ways to prove that it's existing because you can have the rights all you want. But if you can't prove it's going on without a shadow of a doubt, it does no good. You see what I'm saying? It is. Yeah, a good well, step. well, yeah, exactly. So there's there's parts of that Colorado legislation that does mention the. Um, uh, the neural technology being able to accumulate your data. So if you can prove that your data is being accumulated remotely, such as it says in the uh, cyber torture report, re a remote neural technology. If you can prove that, then that means that you will have a case in Colorado. Uh, you right. should be able to prove that easily. And then, you know, if you have scan, that's say for example, you had a scan on implants, and these BCI, these little BCI implants or body implants, would contribute to your data, neural data being stolen. Well, there's there's the infrastructure right there of your case. Right. So, and being able to you know uh, comp, uh, get the evidence on your neurology being inflicted upon or being manipulated, or being sensory deformation, or even anything anything of that nature, where these neural technologies can affect you and cause mental suffering, you know, or harassment and surveillance, <clears throat> or intimidation through, you know, electronics and cybernetic uh, devices and artificial intelligence and whatever have you, these systems that run continuously uh, through EMF, <clears throat> which is considered, still considered to be microwave, um, you know, scalar or whatever, uh, EMF, just in general. So, um, let's take a look. Let's see. So, just to give a little brief um, observation over this aspect is what these, 
Very interesting. These neuromorphic satellites up in space. You know, Neurosatcom. These are military uh, satellites that run on artificial intelligence. So it hasn't been proven yet. It's still it's, nobody talks about the satellites up in space, but I think Mr. Ed Green from uh, the intelligence agency knows that it might be satellite because, you know, people running around the, the U.S. or or running around other countries, for that matter, they're, you know, having uh, sleeper cells or whatever with microwave weapons hitting U.S. allies or or diplomats or government workers everywhere. That's That'd be kind of hard to do, I believe. But, I mean, it's I guess it's feasible, but in the intelligence community where he's from, He's not really laying out the information on what was occurring. So like satellites like this, these are artificial intelligence satellites. Right. You know, neuromorphic. Right. Neuromorphic is basically, you know, we just, you just have to read about it. But it's very interesting. It goes into a lot of different detail technologically wise. You know, neuromorphic off, also goes into uh, connecting your brain to certain devices and, you know, being able to manipulate, manipulate that device with your with your brain. So that's basically like neuromorphic model AI chips that are implanted in certain technologies that connect you to, to your neurology that will allow you to manipulate those technologies just by your brain alone. So, you know, and uh, let's see. Um, so that's another part. So we have neuro rights, uh, you know, which I'm also pulling for August 29th to be a neuro rights day. It doesn't have to be official, but to be recognized also as a neuro rights day would be a great thing. Um, I have made right. a couple of videos based off of that. Um, because if I have you, also, if you, go yeah, ahead. go ahead. No, finish. I've also, oh yeah, I've also uh, worked on a couple of different. I also drafted up a legislation piece that I haven't completed yet, but I'm still working on it. Um, basically, after I found out that the government was working on a federal legislation for neural rights, I wanted to try and sit back and see what would happen with that, but I haven't seen nothing come out about it yet. So Mr. David Schweiker in Scottsdale, Arizona, which was uh, apparently a part of that discussion on neuro federal neural light, neural rights, um, I need to try to reach out back to his office and see what's going on with that. If not, I can try to provide what I have. You know, maybe they'll accept it. Um, you know, um, and for you know another thing is for uh, Eli Crane, uh, a congressman that is my district congressman that was that is part of the Homeland Security Committee. Um, uh, I was able to talk to him. Uh, a couple of different times about, you know, what's going on with the government, what's going on with the Vanna syndrome, what's going on with anomalous health incidences and the silent weapons that are occurring in people's lives every day. We did have a bit of a discussion through that through email, and he did respond a couple of different times. And he mentioned that if people need help with the Vanna syndrome, that they, they need to seek medical treatment for it. Well, we can't because they haven't amended the Havana syndrome act, much less implemented into society or the military or government workers. So basically, all these government workers that were affected by these silent weapons are still uh, going untreated. So let me go to my slide here. Um, we'll just start with this. Uh, advocacy for neural rights. I'm advocating for AHI victims and uh, people implanted with devices. Um, my website is advocacyfornoralrights.org. If you would like to participate on the website, you can send me an email or something of that nature. If you have questions or whatnot, maybe you want to participate in helping. If you have knowledge and expertise, you want to do that, come on in. We'll talk. So um, moving on from that, anomalous health incidents, uh, Homeland Security, silent weapons. So uh, you can get on YouTube if you haven't found out about that yet. And uh, I should have posted the link at the bottom, but I haven't. But Homeland Security Committee uh, had a meeting about the uh, silent weapons. Uh, members of the Homeland Security Committee, Eli Crane, uh, Mr. Uh, Fluger, <laughs> and Mr. Korea, uh, Korea. Sorry, it's, I can't pronounce that. It's Korea, I think. And uh, Mr. Goldman and Mr. Solwell, which were attendees of the uh, Homeland Security Committees, and they're all congressmen. So, and then you have the three expert witnesses, which is uh, Gregory Ed Green, retired Army, which now works for the intelligence agency. He's an intelligence officer. And then you have Mark Zay, the attorney for HI, HI, a, AHI victims. And then you have Christo uh, Greznov, investigative journalist that's been working on this situation for a long time. And so has Mark Zaid ever since before 2016 when the diplomats were affected. He has been already pulling out evidence and working on cases that are that are AHI and Havana syndrome type stuff. Now, what Mr. Kristoff have found out is that these cases go way back to the 70s when Russia was working on these different types of microwave weapons. And um you know, he had stated in part of his journalism uh, act, um, journalism career that in his statements at the Homeland Security Committee, 
was that 26 students at a at a high school were affected by these microwave weapons, which go back into the same symptoms as regular as victims uh, experiencing today. So you know, with the Vanna syndrome, the um, the uh, excuse me. Um, okay, so yeah, the uh, dizziness, unsteadiness, vertigo, emotional distress, headache, hearing loss, insomnia, mild confusion, nausea, slow thinking. You know, all these all these uh, symptoms of being microwave. So, you know, this is a uh, a slide that we'll speak about that talks about the military TRICARE, that is military insurance that is taken on anomalous health incidents treatment um, from the U.S. Department of, of Affairs. So TRICARE treating anomalous health incident for military personnel, uh, people affected by silent weapons attacks in the military will be able to receive medical treatment for AHI anomalous health incidents. No Notice they said people in the military would be able to receive medical. Man, <laughs> what yeah, about the millions yeah. of people? That's what we need to work on, you know. Yeah, well that that was that was part of the. Uh, well, they they do mention and um they do mention in some of the articles that you know say for example uh, let me go to the next slide. So uh, before before we slide before we go over, um you know if you if you are a TI and you were in the military at one time, you may have and you have VA benefits, you may be able to uh, get this recognized, get disability or get something done about it. I know I'm speaking to a, one gentleman uh, about he was in the army at one point or in the military and he's trying to check on getting disability for AHI. Um, maybe even get something else done about it. Who knows? But he's checking on it. So he's working on getting disability for that. So the next slide, uh, Representative August uh, Fugger. Uh, subcommittee on count. He's subcommittee uh, chairman for the Homeland Security um, Committee on Counterterrorism, Law Enforcement, and Intelligence. Uh, <clears throat> discussed the potential targeting of U.S. government officials and their families in the homeland and elsewhere. Uh, we must work to ensure. These were his words. We must work to ensure that those suffering these debilitating symptoms are properly cared for, and if foreign mal. Uh, M Malin, M Malin, <laughs> Malin activity uh, is the cause of the anomalous health incidents, then we must take steps to neutralize the threat actors responsible to include defer, uh, de de deterring their ability to operate with, the, with impunity, which we all, we all experience impunity over these remote neural technologies and microwave weapons, their complete impunity from these people. In the homeland, which is the U.S., uh, targeting our intelligence, tar professionals, and diplomats, but also putting the American public in harm's way. And this is the, he's the congressman of Texas. So Can I if you say live something? in Texas, yeah, yeah go ahead. Because I have a lot of people internationally who watch me. Um, You know, this is just uh, an American meeting, but this stuff's going on everywhere, you know. Yeah, it's a global, uh, yeah, we're going to, we're going to get to that. We're going to talk okay. about that. Um, so the next, so that's, uh, so he's in Texas. He's the congressman representative from Texas. And uh, if you want to send him an out an email, send out, send out an email, uh, get a couple of people together, you know, um, send him out a good letter, maybe a handwritten letter, you know, explaining in detail, because he has a subcommittee, uh, the sub chairman for the Homeland Security Committee. That would be a great one to reach out to, especially if he's in your district, but he's in your, if he's in Texas, still he's good. So uh, what we're going to talk about on this next slide is what can you do? So contacting law enforcement departments, don't tell them that you're you're a victim. Just tell them, just ask them, do they handle anomalous cases that cause a health incident such for microwave weapons, direct energy weapons? Because if you tell them that you're affected by these things, it might try to lock you up still, like a lot of TIs have gone through over the years. Um, contacting Homeland Security, the Department of Defense, the Civil Rights Department, and the Department of Justice. And also like to add uh, contacting the human health uh, services because that's that's also going to be helpful. So contacting the human health services might might help a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, suggesting that uh, would be you know just based off of what the Homeland Security Committee is talking about, what they've done uh, here so far. Um, so that it might be uh, you know a good thing. Um, so and a AHI victims should reach out to every congressman. Uh, reach out to every congressman on the Homeland Security Committee. Uh, congressman of the Homeland Security Committee, these are the ones that were present at that time, Mr. Korea, uh, Korea in California, uh, Mr. Goldman in New York, Eli Crane in Arizona, 
uh, Mr. Sawwell in California, and Mr. Flugger in Texas. So these are the ones that you can probably try to send an email out to. I know I'm connected with Eli Crane. I've spoken to him a couple of different times and his staff because I worked I worked for several months uh, trying to get uh, the Havana Syndrome Bill amended over to the people. They, they sent all the information that I gave them. I sent a certified letter and I went to their office and spoke to them and I dropped off packets and things. I spoke to his staff uh, multiple times and I finally ended up having conversations with Eli Crane, which is a great effect uh, for me, for the TI community, I believe in, in myself because I worked so hard on that while I was getting, you know, going through all these things. But um, it's hard to do anything. <laughs> so um, so to the next. But, yeah, uh, contacting these people would definitely be a, a great Jim benefit. Jordan. Towards... Jim Jordan's one. They say I tried to contact Jim Jordan and I, I, they kept redirecting my calls and laughing at me. Like I would contact his office and call his office and then somebody would come on the phone and just start busting out laughing and hang up on me. Uh, so if you experience that, please don't give up and try to keep calling or try to call from a different phone. Yeah. Try to call from a different phone number or just send a letter, handwritten letter to his direct, uh, director of the office in D.C. And maybe they'll respond. You know, I've spoken to a couple of different offices in D.C. and, you know, I've talked to a lot of different other staff members and I've you know, I've sent out emails and things. I've I've uh, told them about neural riots. I've told them about how Havana syndrome is affecting people, or microwave weapons are affecting people throughout the entire United States and the world. It's a big issue. So we're gonna go to the next slide. But this these are just some of the things that you can do as a group, or you know, sing, sing uh, or by yourself. You know, you can write out letters, emails, things, which I know a lot of a lot of people are doing right now anyway. So I hear that there's a big momentum coming up, but I'm not too sure on that information just yet. But anyway, we're going to move on. Uh, <clears throat> Mark Zay, the attorney for AHI cases, cases, mentions that his Twitter account has believed to be victims of AHI commenting on his posts. So in the in the video of the Homeland Security, he mentions that when uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Um, let me check that. Uh, Mr. Goldman of New York was asking Mr. Zaid, are there anybody, uh, are there any reports outside the U.S. government that are affected by AHI? And he said, yes, there's people on my account or commenting on my post that are afflicted by AHI. So yeah, he, he actually right came across that document or the NSA admitting that they were using this technology on innocent civilians. I have that video. I wish I knew where it was in my computer because I would share it. But Mark Zaid is actually reading this letter and showing this document he found on the NSA using uh, inform using this on civilians. Did you know about that? No, I had no idea. Oh, I had to. Well, when I, I'm gonna find it when we get off here, and I'll send it to you. Okay. Yeah, that would be great if I can get a copy of that. I'd like to take a look at it. Um. Yeah, that's that's a good benefit right there. If that actually yeah. occurred. Yeah, that's a good benefit. Yeah, really. It it was on his Twitter page. That's where I got it. Was a about a year ago. That's nice. It's really yep. good. Yeah, because he's he's been in the game for at least a decade, as he mentioned. Yep. You know, before the diplomats in Havana was was affected by the microwave weapon, he's already been attending to cases with AHI. So he's he's like he's like top dog, you know, when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, it's too bad that he's not representing other people, but you know, it's it's understandable. Um, uh, much less being able to even you know connect with him. But that's really cool. I didn't know that about, about the NSA part. All right, so next slide. Uh, global campaign. Uh, Greg Edgreen, retired U.S. Army, now serves as intelligence officer, mentions that the targeting is a global campaign where attacks have happened on every continent, besides Antarctica, so he mentions. So in his part, he did a lot of signal intelligence. He's done a lot of background research and um, signal listening and listening to uh finding articles on people being affected by microwave weapons or some 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 or different types of weapons that were might have been affecting people that led to AHI and um he also you know he mentions all these things but he's not he didn't really he can't really speak on every issue that of of how this is happening although that they were talking about some of these things are contributed to satellite dishes um you know, so that's that's a big thing right there, which I, I guess in some cases it does occur, you know, from the amount of people that I spoke to that, you know, they are getting microwave in their house by someone potentially across the street or something, you know, maybe something in that area. Um, so, but he's also pulling for the implementation of amending Havana Syndrome Act. Uh, 
I don't know how they you know want to amend that bill. But uh, if they do, let's hope that they pull it towards more of the public because there's nothing yet as of yet for the public. So even just going to the hospital and saying that you're affected by some sort of AHI weapon still might lock you up in a mental hospital. Just ba just even though we have the evidence, but maybe not. I don't know. There are people like Dr. Lynn Bayer that has, um, uh, if, if it's okay to talk about him, uh, I know he, uh -huh. uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Lynn Bayer had received disability for uh, Havana syndrome. So that's that's one good thing. But he has a lot of expertise and you know, doctor knowledge and, you know, medical knowledge and whatnot, be able to navigate through the system to do that. So it's, that's one good thing. I know there's a lot of other uh, people that are um, um, diagnosed with the Vanna syndrome as well throughout the country of the United States. But that's, this is, but that's, that's good that they recognize that this is a global campaign that's occurring because that also alleviates the situation for TIs because TIs are also afflicted uh, internationally as well. So uh, research Mr. Ed Green and uh, find out more about him. Maybe you can try to contact him and you guys do like a, a, a group effort to reach out to him and let him know, you know, that these occurrences are happening. Even though he's not representing cases, he's only representing the government workers at this point and military personnel. So what we really need someone to be appointed to handle uh, the public cases. That's what we really need in the government. And uh, I don't think there's anything for that yet, but the, Homeland Security Committee might be pulling for that, uh, since they do have articles mentioning, um, you know, to protect the people and the public from AHI, microwave weapons and such. So, all right, let me go to the next slide. And Eli Crane, this is this guy is top dog. He's a, he's a good guy. He's a, a Navy SEAL, served in the military for, I think, 13 years, I believe. And um, I believe he's uh, one of the most courageous congressmen that I've seen as of right now, because, you know, not just because I've, I've had conversations with him, but uh, because he's very knowledgeable. And uh, in his newsletters, he wants, he tries to present the cases of the, the deep state, basically. Uh, he's totally against the deep state and what's happening inside the government. He's totally against what's what's going on in this country today. Uh, he's, he's, he recognizes silent, silent weapons. He recognizes AHI. He recognizes people uh, that are afflicted inside the United States that have file reports. Um, he recognizes a lot of different things when it comes to this. So he's he's uh, he's also a part of the committee as well of Homeland Security. So that's a that's a very good uh, acknowledgement on his part, and a good not another piece of good acknowledgement that I got I yeah. actually get the get yeah go ahead. Okay, so you're gonna have some of my subscribers are gonna say okay, these are all people in. Um, Please don't get upset me for saying it. I just want you to clarify it for them. You know, you have them, these TIs that are going to say, well, these are all actors acting like they want to help us and a part of the problem. Uh, what's your opinion on that? And um, could you clarify, um, you know, that these people are really working for us? Well, I don't want to discredit the things I'm saying. You know, some people, some you know, people are, yeah. you know, and I even am like that sometimes. I'm like, man, maybe this is just all an act to make it look like they're doing something for us just to cover it up even deeper. You know what I'm saying? Do yeah, you, is your that point. your opinion or is your opinion different? Well, I, I don't, like I said, I don't want to discredit, discredit what I'm saying right now, but. Um, no, I'm not discrediting you know, what you're saying. Maybe. I'm just well, saying. I, well, I'm saying that I, I wouldn't want to discredit what I'm saying right now, but maybe. Um, you know, um, I don't, I'm not sure. I have no evidence to back that up. Right. Uh, like, I, I hope not. Nothing. I hope not. Well, I hope, know. yeah, that's, yeah. Because, I mean, if, if something like that were to occur, which I don't think so. Like Mark uh, Zaid, just, I would definitely think Mark Zaid is a positive influence. Like I said, he, he, that man, if I could find that video, it'd be helpful, but I just don't know where it is right now. But he did find this document on the NSA and, uh, it, it actually proved that the NSA were using weapons on on U.S. citizens on U.S. soil. Yeah. Um, and I and don't think I'm trying to discredit you. I'm just trying to get you to give an answer to the doubters out there. You know, that's all I'm trying to do because I know that a lot of people doubt. Um, you know, the Homeland Security meeting. They were like, oh, they all blamed it on Russia and stuff like that. And I just want to get that across so all them doubters before they even say anything, you, you know, you, you can plug it in because you've talked to Eli Crane, you know, him. you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. 
Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, let me go ahead and go to the next slide right quick. But yeah, uh, I'll I'll get to that. Let me. But yeah, Eli Okay. Crane. Um, you know, he seems to be a, a pretty good uh, candidate to help people. I think he's interested in doing that. Um, not to say that he's. you know, or anything like that, but I think he's a good candidate to help people. He's got a family, you know, he takes care of things. He's always busy. He's always busy doing laws and amending, and amending laws and passing laws. <laughs> And being so, good, it's um, good that he took the time to talk to you. That's a, that's a positive affirmation in my opinion, you know? yeah, 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 it was pretty good. Um, you know, we got to speak right before they went into the silent weapon with the Homeland Security Committee when they, where they had that conversation. So that was, That was a good bombshell on my part because I, I worked extensively on that. And to, and to find out that Eli Crane was actually a part of the Homeland Security Committee talking about silent weapons, the same thing that we were already discussing before, um, that to see that is like a, a major accomplishment on my part. I spent several months working on that. Right. And um, yeah, so that was that was pretty tough. That was a lot of hard work. <laughs> so, you know, let me let me go over to the next slide and then we'll, we'll pick up what we're talking about. So but yeah. Um, Yeah, that was that was definitely definitely a, a big one right there, and uh, I did I did have somewhat of a legal aid helping me out. Uh, I came across a, a student that's studying law. He's not an attorney yet, but um, he gave me some advice on how to navigate, you know, and how to do certain things. So I you know look at that as like a, a big plus too because I probably wouldn't have done it without him. Um, so you know having that you know is was a plus for me. But, you know, I've always I've always been an advocate for doing my own work. And, you know, I'm normally like a nomad when it comes to working through the TI community because, you know, I, I do things on my own. I have my own way of doing things. So Right. but it's I've been I've been successful in almost every area that I've hit, you know, maybe a couple of a couple of different fails. But, you know, everything's a learning process, you know. <laughs> All right. so, yeah. It's sort of like, you know, I'm getting crit criticized. Well, just a little criticism um, about talking about God on my show and, uh, well, not a show, but um, whatever, my channel, whatever. And, you know, Jesus Christ, I used to, I was so mad at God. I, I preached the word and graduated Bible college from American Bible Academy anyway. Um, so I, I was discouraged, man. I was mad at this program, mad at God, denied God and everything, you know what I'm saying? So then when I turned back to God, God showed me he was real, uh, you know, and showed me some things and I'm not going to go into this too deeply, but you know, I'm never going to stop talking about Jesus Christ on my thing. Now, do I judge somebody who don't believe in Jesus Christ? No, I'll walk. I'll do just, I'll do just as much to help somebody who's not a believer as I will a believer. I don't think I'm better than nobody or nothing, but you know, my belief is to, you know, spread the gospel if I can, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, all I ask is if you are watching my channel and you don't believe in God or whatever, please don't take it personal that I talk about God. I have a lot of believers and encourage them through God and through the word of God. And I'm going to continue doing that. Um, so all I'm saying is if you don't believe in God, please don't take it personal. I'm not trying to force God on you or nothing like that. I'm trying to expose information and at the same time, uh, help the ones that do believe out, you know what I'm saying? And encourage. So that's, I just wanted to put that in there too. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, I totally understand what you mean. You know, um, you know, God's a major aspect in a lot of people's lives and some some don't some disagree with it, you know, a lot of people do disagree with it. Um, especially in today's time when, you know, uh, things are gearing up. Uh I'm not gonna say certain types of information because I don't want to be a credible source or discreditable source for it, but Right. it seems like other countries are starting to gear up for certain things and you know, I don't wanna But seeing that is like, uh, you know, like certain people that I do get to talk to in the public, you know, I mentioned that if if a major co conflict does happen globally, then neural weapons would be the one top priority weapon that will be used from satellites to, to ground, Yeah, definitely. you know, neural weapons and such. And the U.S. population is already being targeted right now as it is. So and around the world, for that matter. So if anything were to occur, you can probably, you know, uh, allegedly maybe expect more people to be targeted by these devices. Um, who knows? Who knows? That's the biggest fear that uh, people should be more aware of and try to pull for peace around the world and more uh, conflictive, uh, combative treaties around the world, acknowledging 
that neural weapons do exist, such as the, uh, like, for example, China's uh, neural strike weapon that is said to be able to manipulate political personnel and have them do whatever that they want them to do and things, things of that nature. So these, these little articles and things that have come out, you know, that mentions all these types of stuff uh, are very, um, you know, it's in public information. They, they mentioned that these neural weapons can manipulate people. Yes, and they can. who knows? Yeah, who knows? But, you know, as far as like the, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, but I haven't found anything that says, you know, going back to where the, uh, the three uh, expert witnesses on the Homeland Security video were talking about, it's always, it's Russia doing all this. So if that if that's the case, then the Ukrainians would be mentioning to the U.S., you know, or maybe to the intelligence service, I'm not sure. But there might be some sort of public statement saying that, you know, Russia's using neural weapons on people in the Ukraine through the conflict. And I haven't haven't found anything. Right. Like and then why would Russia choose a, a million dissidents in America? Or well, they call us dissidents. That's what we are in their eyes. I think we're children of God who are very uh, good people and innocent people. Right. But why right. would Russia, what would Russia want with us? You know what I'm saying? Um, well, and well, that, I, that I, would depend I was on... going to ask you a question. Do you think this is a, a depopulation agenda with these weapons or research and development to make them better or uh, perfect AI? What's your opinion on that? Um, uh, population control for sure. Uh, I was listening to a doctor the other day on a video where he had mentioned that the world just hit 8 billion people worldwide, 8 billion. We were at seven and we're at eight. So he had mentioned that the population needs to drop down to just 1 billion people. Wow. So, um, but it doesn't need to happen fast to, I guess, to drop down the population, but slowly. Yes. So, yeah. So however he means by that, I'm not sure, but they're speaking about this openly that the population needs to drop. So when it comes to this, these neural weapons and, and artificial intelligence devices and manipulation and control devices and all these things, these software platforms, these algorithms, these operating stations and the people that design and keep up to date with all these computers that can operate what a TI goes through every day, uh, takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of re more research. So, so the AI is basically collecting information off your brain to update these systems or software and hardware and devices and whatnot including the implementation of nanos and implants and things. So 30 years from now, who's no 30 years from now, you know, if we're still here on this planet, <laughs> there's no telling how, how, how life is going to be, you know, Bill Gates, he's, he wants to build smart cities. You know, we already experiencing, uh, you know, AHI through microwave hearing fray effect and uh, artificial intelligence, basically talking to our brain continuously cybernetics, you know, cybernetics is a machine uh, built onto an organism. You know, these are cybernetic machines that are built onto an organism. Um, you know, it's just it's just more uh, combative in our area, but it's 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 a, it's a sedating uh, neural neural control system that keeps you completely wiped out. Uh, you know, they can project holograms in your areas. They can make you hear sounds. They can do all kinds of things with these computers. And I so, was, you know, like, yeah. I hope one day so these people that's got this scanning equipment. I hope one day they just get it in their heart. Okay, three months of free scans. If you're a TI and think you're a TI, come to me. I'm gonna give you a free scan. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that yeah. would that would really boost uh, exposing this. Right. So the so like they like what like as you know the AI neural networks that are contributed to billions of different nodes, uh, much like the the brain has a billion different nodes or a trillion or more. You know, based off of high performance computers uh, that can affect an individual, uh, these computers are AI model, neural model computers, or AI neural oh, yeah. computers. So they can use these these multitask computers that you that utilize AI neural modeling to to connect to your brain and basically do what they want. So this is like a a potential brief authorization of what they have. You know, it's probably bigger, but they've been using supercomputers since the seventies. You know, yep. AI has been around forever. Um. You know, here's another observation of uh, the general concept of supercomputers, um, you know, and all that. And this website is advocacyforneurorights.com. It's a dot .org. Dot .org, advocacy my bad, dot .org. Yeah. Dot org. If you yeah. want to look at the website, uh, this 
this website he's looking at is advocacy for neuralrights.org. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for that. So going, going back to the slide, they're they're uh, calling the AHI war related illness. So they're already they're already mentioning that this is war on the public, um, you know, such as uh, the committee with the Homeland Security. They're mentioning that and the three expert witnesses that are part of that. Um, the Veterans Administration recognizing anomalous health incidences as a war related illness. So we're, we're all war victims, basically, of this this uh, device, these these people that what they're doing. So. You know, uh, when I talk to, I talk I usually talk to veterans when I mention these things. I give them, I give them my business card for the advocacy group, and I and then I explain to them that you know, um, you know, this these neuro weapons have been occurring for a while, and they they ask me, well, why? Why does it occur? Well, why did they have a Holocaust back in World War II? Why? Because they were testing on people, right? So this is basically your your modern day Holocaust and slavery, neuro enslavement, and Holocaust. So. You know, and, and while being uh, subjected to directed energy weapons and all that, so that's that's another one. It's 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 a crazy world for a person that's being targeted by this, which Mr. Greg Eggreen still says to this day that the government workers are still being targeted to this day. So they're still being affected by these devices. So that's another one. So you know, if you're a veteran, I would definitely suggest reach out to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs and see what happens, see what they say. And um, I know they're going to be doing more diagnos diagnostics on uh, veterans to give them some treatment and help and whatnot. So that administration would be a plus for you to reach out to. Um, you know, just keep in, just keep ties with them. Go meet your 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 um, uh, chain of command that you had before, or another type of officer that works in a different department somewhere. You know, however however you handle it in the military, just you know handle it like that. Just you know, write up. Uh, you know, a summary of what you go through, maybe do an affidavit, send it off to them, you know, see what they say, or go down to the office and see what they say, because you are being affected by these weapons. All right, so the next slide. Um, Christo uh, Grazov is an investigative journalist researching microwave acoustic weapons, presented statements in front of the Homeland Security Committee. So, um, yeah, he, he has been doing research for a while as well. He was uh, doing research in Russia. Uh, based off of microwave weapons, he had been doing um, a lots of uh, other extensive research. I believe he was part of another type of committee. I can't remember some sort of uh, intelligence committee that he was a journalist for, doing investigations and whatnot. Uh, you have to research that part. Uh, but um, you know, so far as him, you know, I would try to try to reach out to Christo Grezinov. I realize that he has a, a Twitter account on X and. You might be able to get them. You might be able to relay some messages to them to do a journalist, investigative journalist on people that are outside the government. Um, I know that he has not had any evidence of people inside America, outside the government affected, but he does have evidence of people in, like, say, for example, Russia that are not in the government that have been affected by weapons, such as the 26 students in uh, Russia that at this high school that were affected that had the similar symptoms. So there's that. And next slide, and thank you um, for observing uh, <clears throat> my uh, advocacy neural rights page is right here. And then my YouTube channel, Advo for Neural Rights, and then my Instagram, Advo for Neural Rights. So I appreciate it for letting me do the slide. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So, for, for, Oh, yeah, so well, me, I appreciate you doing it, man. Any, anybody that speaks out is a Man, and anybody that don't speak out is important. Any target individual is important, but I feel like we need more people doing videos, saying what they're going through. Um, you know, um, I might even, I'm trying to interview Holly because um, she had, you know, she gets hit very, very bad. And her yeah. targeting compared to mine is <laughs> way worse, you know. So, yeah. uh, especially with these weapons, um, this is horrible. And um, I think that's part of my target and is having to see the woman I love suffer. Um, yeah. And it sucks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I can, I can relate. Man. Um, I used to, I used to have a girlfriend that had B2K really bad. And, uh, you know, I, I met her in Phoenix, Arizona, which is where I'm, where I used to live. Um, so she kind of joined up with our activist group there, which finally became targeted in traffic before it was the Phoenix support group. 
and then it just migrated it over into some other stuff and then ended up doing the anti neural human trafficking which she really liked that idea she thought it was great so she applied some information to it and she's got videos herself where she's put them online and uh but she had b2k really bad and um there were times that i i know what you mean when when people yeah. go through that and you do know, you know anything lost... hey do you know any information of, you know i've been really really digging and i don't like putting no information out there if i can't really validated or nothing but i've been trying to find information on them live streaming us uh do you know anything about the live streaming they do with us on the dark web um well i do know that the cyber torture report mentions uh live streaming uh voyeurism and such yeah, voyeurism. Uh, through the dark web so there's that let me see if i have anything on that right quick because um, I noticed I've seen that when you were going through your website thing, you had something about the live streaming. That's why I asked you about it. Yeah. Well, that was that was mentioning some uh, abuse occurrences that were oh. going through the, uh, the live streaming. Um, so there's that. Uh, let me see. Because, yeah, what it mentions is uh, cyber technology already plays a role of an enabler in the perpetration of both physical and psychological forms of torture. So, yeah, they mentioned on the Cyber Torture Report that uh, through decimation of audio and video recordings of torture or murder for the purposes of intimidation or even live streaming of live stream of child sexual abuse on demand and voyeuristic clients. So he's basically relating cyber technology with neural technology and all these and live streaming what's happening. Uh, as far as that, it's just you know, what what TI is called remote neural monitoring which is basically that's that's a concise terminology for what it really is. And including the cyber technology and the deep web, there's different types of internet that are out there that could potentially be used in servers. Um, you know, that's, that's what it dives down into, including the, on the medical aspect, the medical aspect, you know, the implants and things and cyber security, which those are medical patients, uh, medical patients to receive implants that have uh, data security and whatnot. But there are also data centers that collect all these uh, medical patients' uh, their neurology information, their anatomy, all these things that they go through is being collected at a data center. So you you take that example, which they call it home health observation or monitoring. You take that example and flip it around. You see what a, what a TI gets. A TI gets implants and monitoring with AI connected to it. So these are this is a dark science, dark medical on the private sector that you will never hear about on the on the open public sector of um a medical and scientific you'll 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 learn about that but there's also the private sector which is more dark you won't hear anything about that so it's basically home health monitoring with artificial intelligence on the dark now, side. i don't i don't know about I, I heard you mention something about um weapons and backpacks and stuff and uh i did share a video yesterday with uh karen melton stewart where she actually found a report of people carrying around these weapons and backpacks now, um, I do believe some of that is going on. I don't believe they have to have that. Uh, but I don't know if you saw the video yesterday, but it was Karen Mountain Stewart. Um, you know, she was talking about how um, she found this report and um, the report. And anyway, she talked to somebody and some people get followed with these people in backpacks doing that. Now, maybe that was back in the day and they've upgraded or something. Because I know for a fact they don't. I, I was I jumped in. Um, I think I was in twelve states in six months and got fried everywhere I went. And I know nobody was following me on the planes and stuff. And uh, when I would get off the plane, right when I got off the plane, I would start getting hit. So you know, I know it's not all that, but do you not think that's possible sometimes? To carry a handheld device. Yeah. Well, there's there's a patent for a handheld device. No, I mean Ravenclaw. Uh, you got the Ravenclaw device. That's yeah. one device. Yeah, um, that's one. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of different patents. On what they right. Can, what they I just heard you mention that at the beginning, and I just wanted to cover yeah. that real quick. Uh, uh, well, what they were saying was in the Homeland Security video in the committee was that these, because Eli Crane was asking, have you seen, the, I was asking uh, Greznov, have you seen any of these devices? And he mentioned that he's seen a 1991 device which is your basic model of a satellite dish tied to a computer or something. Right. And then, but there, but by then, I mean, they're more upgraded by then, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah. No.
But they, and I like but they what you said because a lot of people don't understand these supercomputers have been around since the seventies, if not longer. And this has been going yeah. on, and it, it needs to stop because, uh, you know, eventually everybody's going to be hooked to it if it don't stop. If they ain't that's, already, hooked I believe to it. that's the plan. I think. Well, honestly, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Uh, judging from what I've seen throughout society today, I, I think everybody's got an AI embedded into their brain. Do you watch Sabrina person, Wallace? Oh yeah, I watched Sabrina Wallace. She's been she's been going through a lot of criticism lately, is what I noticed. But uh, you know, uh, she talks about the biofield and the wireless body area network, and I, I really think, yeah, I really think that's got a lot to do with a lot of it too. Yeah, uh, there are some articles on that. Uh, it does mention that your devices can create a body area network, uh, including like remote, because we have do have BCIs inside of our body. Um, you know, that do contribute to that and probably have more of a, like a GIS satellite syncing to your body, being able to communicate with you. So, you know, um, uh, I believe that every person has some sort of device in their body inter internationally, which we already see that it's already global. So what these AIs can do is embed themselves inside of your brain and can do anything at that point send you silent messages that can uh, right. make you see things, hear things, experience things. So, and manipulate your brain senses. Apparently they can do all that, and, which is part of the five neural rights. The five neural rights mentions these things that neurotechnologies can manipulate your brain and uh, basically uh, manipulate your consciousness, bypass the consciousness, get into your most intimate moments inside your, inside your brain that you've had and be able to decipher all that and create AI pictures based on and I, was, so. I was watching something the other day uh coca-cola made a deal with somebody where they're messing with nanotechnology inside of coca-cola um and uh um i'm gonna i have that video it's only a one minute and something video so i really i was gonna post it and i might still post it but it's kind of interesting the deal they make uh that they made with these people to test out nanotechnology in coca-cola and um study how the tension it attaches to sensors and all that stuff very interesting right. stuff that is some interesting stuff that is that's that's much what like, better way um, than you know a lot of people drink coke <laughs> what better way than to embed well, it uh, and i can at, send you the video if you'd like when and through a text yeah, message sure. I like to see get the video. Uh, yeah you know for example there were some cases where uh companies that make uh certain kind of candies like skittles oh. and whatnot uh not not advocating not discrediting or crediting as a resource, but I'm saying that uh, different a couple of companies like Skittles candy, where people were finding fentanyl inside the candy. Wow! So there's that. And so if they can find fentanyl drugs inside candy, then you can most likely find nanos or something inside of a Coke can. Right. You know I mean? And do you think? Do you know anybody who? Um, I know Amy's Audios does scans and stuff like that. We, but I wish we could find an advocate that was you know so settled with money and had it that they could take three months of just going around and saying, okay, any TIs who need scans, you come to me and you got it for free. You know what I'm saying? Somebody yeah. needs to, that would open the door for neural rights because you'd be able to be able to prove it. That's the big problem with people getting scanned is so expensive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, because if we were able to do that, then that would be a big momentum towards neural freedom, cognitive freedom, cognitive liberty. Right. You know, and all that, and uh, you know that would that would definitely uh, tell the federal government that you know, much like the MK Ultra days and how they were handling things back then with patients, apparently they've been inject doctors have been injecting people for for years with this stuff, um, based off of a, 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 a case study that I always use. I always go back to is a, a lady named Barbara in Texas that was implanted with two small devices in her forehead after a laser surgery from a dermatology office. And those implants were sent to a university in California, which they defined as a neural uh, high-tech device. Both of them are high-tech devices. So wow. if that can she occur... She did a laser surgery on her forehead, like a, like a facial? Yeah. There and was they a, put there implants was devices in her through the lasers. Wow. Well, no, it wasn't through the lasers. They had gave her a sedative shot to ease Oh, a sedative shot. A sedative shot. Alan? And then it ended up with two small devices inside of her head. And she proved it. Yeah, she proved it. Wow. They were medically removed, the implants, because two weeks after the event, there was a small bumps in her forehead. 
So after that, they were able to take the devices out and then send them over to California, in which they uh, they investigated and defined them as uh, small high tech devices. That's amazing. So, you know, a, a, and you also had a chip come out of your head, didn't you, when that doctor in Mexico? Um, yeah, I had actually. Well, it didn't come out; it popped in my forehead. I guess it blew up. Uh, that oh, was okay. on purpose. When I went to go see Doctor Chipola in Mexico, um, you know, I got into his EMP bed. And, uh, you know, I think God graced that entire situation. Uh, I think he did. And I was sitting there and that implant just popped because before I was getting attacked right here by, by the system, by the microwaves. And right. AI. So it's biodegradable, right basically. Well, self, yeah. self, self, uh, what do you, so where, where it don't leave no evidence, self-destructible. Um, self-destructible well they make them they make uh medical semiconductors with silicone so they're basically okay. like they're organic but they're made with organic material so they can't be picked up or they don't corrode inside the body over time so if you have organic material on your implant you go get an mri done you're not going to find it you're not going to wow. see it you have to have a you have to have a nonlinear junction frequency scan done to be able to find it because mris are not going to do it um because these are organic based uh, coating on your semiconductors and implants and whatnot. So you're not going to see it. And I know, you know, just based off of that alone, that's information that will carry on for a long time until, you know, there's more ways of finding them. But a nonlinear junction device and frequency devices to be able to scan for these devices inside your body, whether active or not, uh, will be able to see those. And then you can use it as a report, especially since more information is coming about AHI. Now, connecting... Havana syndrome, AHI, two frequencies um, that are contributed to BCIs or, or small targeted delivery devices that can go to certain areas of your body. Some reports that I've seen uh, do go to your temples of your forehead, your heart, your hands. Uh, you know, some of these are GPS implants. Some of them are telemetry. Some of them are V2K. Got to be GPS uh, extra and implants. And the reason I say that, man, is I used to, I, when I, I was getting gang stalked and I would see a train stopped, I would jump on the, on the train. The train would go to the next, I would stay on that train for hours and just jump off. I would be, I'd get gang stalked, perp street theater, right when I jumped off, followed and everything. And this is not in my head. I'm serious. Like getting hit with weapons, V2K and all that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, I would just jump on a train and go anywhere and get off and it would all follow me. They have to have wow. some something in me to do that is what I'm thinking. But really, they oh, don't. Yeah. If they have your neural signature, they can track you, too, by satellites. But, yeah, oh, it freaked me out. Well, that was well, the, the neural signature was something that the NSA had uh, made a long time ago. Um, I can't really remember what's based off of that. But I it said there's a patent on it. I know that. Yeah. And it's produced by yeah. the NSA. So yeah. it's it's obviously a real thing, unless, you know, it's yeah, it's obviously gotta be a real thing. Um uh there are a couple of ways that you could probably do a neural pattern that's based off your neural signature, is your your neurons and all these things inside your brain and your that produces by your neural cognitive patterns, which you can accumulate a, you know, a performance uh perform performance data based off your brain which would contribute to your neural signature which they could collect and decode it and code it and do all these things and and basically uh narrow it down to a simple uh simplex or a simple way of being able to keep a person locked into a machine like this so all right um i could definitely see that being able to narrow it down the codes and yeah those. and they say everybody's neural signature is different just like a fingerprint yeah yeah well if you leave fingerprints everywhere i mean and there's a crime scene. Someone's going to find your fingerprint. If you have a record, they're going to be able to. They're probably going to draft you into the, you know, the witness stand or something. You know, right. You but I was always time? amazed on how when I'd get off, when I would jump a train, I'd just get on the back of a freight train and go, and then just get off two or three hours later anywhere with my battery out of my phone. Bam! They're right on me. And it's just huh. it was crazy, man. That was in 2018. Some crazy times back then. Because I, yeah. I was just now learning what a target individual was and what I was. And I was like, wow, man, I didn't know what was yeah. going on. Suicide temp yeah. after suicide temp, man, it was just really yeah. hard. Yeah, I, I remember seeing some of the uh, the videos you recorded. I remember watching those. You were what, back in the day? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I, I was really messed up, wasn't I? 
Yeah. Like not even yeah, on this wasn't on drugs. Like I was messed up. I was because it was fight or flight twenty four seven. I was in terror. I, yeah. I was. They had me so screwed up and in panic at all times because I didn't understand yeah. what was going on. Yeah, I remember that. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything yeah, else? Um, let me see. There's probably well, we, I mean, if you well, if you like, we can do another interview or video sometime. Yeah, we can do a follow. But, um, okay, so let me let me do a quick. Are you quick scheduling rundown, anything? Quick... Are you planning anything for TI Day, the August 29th, or do you know? Yeah, I'm gonna try and go to the. I'm gonna try and go to Colorado. For okay. It. I'm gonna try and get up there for that. If not, um, I do plan on contacting some people here in Arizona that may want to do something together. Um, I want to pledge for neural rights. I want to put that out there, and I want to talk about the AHI silent weapons people are affected by. And the Homeland Security Committee, it seems to be a big topic right now. And plus, it's more credible resource when you do talk about it because the public are more uh, more uh, understanding to that. So yes, in any are. case, the, the people that I do talk to anyway are familiar with these AIs and computer systems that can do all these things. So it's becoming more knowledge, you know, more knowledge. And I, I do hand out a business card every time I do talk to someone so they can get on the page and... Uh, You know, it's um, I, I got a lot of these too. So, and uh, you know, it's these are one of my cards. So I I hand this out to people yeah. when I talk to them. And it's advocacyforneurorights.org. Yeah, and then I have a little scan code for uh the Instagram, so you can just scan the QR code for it. It's pretty cool. And uh, you'll go straight to the Instagram. And then I should have I wanted to put my uh, YouTube channel on there, but I wasn't able to. Um. But maybe later, <laughs> maybe later. I can. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, there were some cases that I wanted to try and spit some stuff out. Um, I know I'm going through some things right now. I'm actually, uh, it's it's a slow process of doing what I'm doing. Uh, but um, nice definitely public neural rights, huh? So patience is a virtue and working on a website uh-huh yeah it's it's a virtue that's for sure i'm just happy about all the uh legislations that are coming out like california but california is getting the legislation but who's in california to, to appreciate that legislation there all the californians left <laughs> you know yeah so you know there's not going to be anybody there so you know you know but i don't i don't know <laughs> I love California. Don't get me wrong. I like I like being able to go there and appreciate it and see the beach and everything. Um, but uh, some of the some of the bigger class technologies do come out of California, like Silicon Valley, that produces spy satellites and all these things and semiconductors. And Arizona is basically like another uh, Silicon Valley because Arizona has manufacturing uh, companies that work on implants and semiconductors and things. They actually do all this stuff here. And it's like a it's like a infestation of all these things, and um, you know it's uh, just getting to that point of um, you know finding you know a way to make a solution so these things don't happen because we know that doctors are already implanting people uh, nationally. So um, and that's I'm gonna what's pause happening. this real quick. I got to use the bathroom, yeah. and I'll be right. Well, back. let's go ahead and end it. Let's go ahead and end it. Oh, because, okay. Uh, I know you got to go to the bathroom, um, but you know. I just want and to real say thank quick, you. do you know any uh, doctors that um will that people can go to if, if you know if they're lucky and they got some cash or something and can get to for Havana syndrome? Do you know any names of any doctors that do the hand the Havana syndrome thing? Uh, Doctor Hoffman in Florida. Uh, that's about the only one I know. Okay. Uh, besides Doctor Lynn Bear, I mean, you can probably try to reach out to him and ask him how he went through his proceeding of getting the Havana syndrome and, and disability on top of that. I don't want to spit out the guy's uh, his uh, personal information. Um, okay, I don't want to do that. So well, I... you know, but um, but yeah, um, if you want to send me an email, you can. My email is Lewis L E W I S dot row R O W E eight two nine at gmail dot com, and I can see what I can do, or just contact me through advocacyfornorights dot org and send me a message through there as well, and uh, I'll try to swing some information, um, whatever I can, and, and send it to you. So. All right. Well, I appreciate right. you coming yeah. out, Lewis, and I'm going to stop yeah, this recording sure, right now. And yeah, maybe we can do a follow up.
And uh, okay. y'all remember uh, August 29th is Target Individual Day. Maybe um, if I find out anything going on, I can post it on my YouTube um, in the uh, community section where I do my post, like rallies or something, like you could join or something. I'll, I'll try to find out the information on that and try to post it. So anyway, God bless yeah. all TIs. And Happy thank TI you Day, everybody. Out. August 29th, New Arrest Day. Thank you.